All right, folks, my name is Trent Duncan. I'm here with Russ Scala from the Institute and Scala Precision Health. Now, Russ has been looking at performance athletes for most of his life, and now we're switching a little bit, and we're going to talk a little about the brain, performance of the brain, and then sitting in front of a computer all day long and kind of what that does to the body and the brain. All right, Russ, how are you doing today? Hey, good to see you, Trent. All right, good. So I'm excited about this. This is cool because, I mean, the Internet's not going anywhere. <laughs> Technology's coming to the place. We see virtual reality this. We see devices. Everybody's connected all the time. Everybody's jacked in. So, and and it's, it's really new. It's been in, what, the past really mainstream 10 years, maybe 15. And uh, so there's really no studies about how this has really affected people because it's so new and so fresh. So let's talk a little bit about what you found and what you see that's out there and then how that relates to what we got moving forward you know, in society as a whole. Yeah, that's, uh, that's really interesting. From a virtual reality standpoint, uh, anytime you immerse yourself in two different fields that don't talk to each other, like from the brain injury standpoint, we know that virtual reality can help with brain injury patients rehab you know, from their brain injury help them. It e even helps with, with, with addicts right now. China has the first internet addiction center just opened up and we're drilling down on the treatment protocols. So what, what we've learned now is that you could use the virtual reality, you could use the, you know, the computer to enhance the brain, but if you're in front of the computer too long, it could also damage the brain. And that's sort of the area that we're looking at for performance wise. Gotcha. And you're really good at that, taking two different areas that don't talk to each other, nobody really knows, Put them together and find some results. Yeah, I start a lot of trouble that way because we beat the pants off of some people that didn't see some things. I got a great group. And um, I mean, think about it. Physiologically, when you're staring at a computer for 8 to 15 hours and you're a high-level code writer, mm -hmm. what's going to happen physiologically to your body? So we just run some tests and we talk about what's happening because a lot of these people end up going south and they don't know why. And, and that doesn't have to happen. Yeah, well, eight to 10 hours is a, is a slow day for a code writer, but <laughs> even just the normal person that sits at a desk all day long, because we see more and more of those jobs. So let's talk about, so physiologically, humans we know we're not meant to sit. For centuries, we were hunter-gatherers. And so now, the last 100 years, we've been sitting in front of computers and have a lot of desk jobs. So we're not physiologically meant to kind of sit down. So what happens to the body and the brain when we do sit in front of computers or just at a desk or a workstation all day long. You know, obviously, when you sit and you don't move, the inflammation response could kick in. And, you know, a lot of people are gaining weight. We have an obesity epidemic. So that combined with sitting, sitting is supposed to be the new smoking. We are hardwired to move. You know, millions of years ago, when we were hunters and gatherers. We used to get up and walk 10 to 15 miles for food. You know, now some of the computer people that I work with, when we're trying to look at their workspace and improve performance, they're sitting for eight hours. They're banging down the Skittles and the, and the, and the high sugar drinks to maintain their brain chemistry, which is cool. We're just trying to shift their body over from a performance standpoint. So, so sitting too long can definitely impact the brain performance. And it could actually lower neurotransmitters in your brain. These are feel-good chemicals that keep us happy. So when you're staring at that computer for eight to 10 hours doing what you do best, writing code, like, like a lot of our clients, you're going to de decrease your feel-good chemicals, serotonin, dopamine, adrenaline. And that's what you got to be aware of. So we want to educate these companies that we're working with. If these people get symptoms and they go into traditional medicine, a doctor isn't going to know how to treat a programmer. His prescriptions and drugs. Yeah, he's going to write, write Xanax and Prozac. Okay, so that's one of the, one of the kind of focus on, because you're sitting there in front of uh, a computer. Obviously, your body's not moving a whole lot. Right. But your brain is constantly, because you're analyzing everything that goes on in the screen and stuff, so your brain's actually working in overdrive. So that's why a lot of the chemicals in your brain are just get depleted, correct? No, yeah, exactly. That, I'm glad right. you said that. Even when you're sleeping, your brain is metabolically active. Um, you know, you, uh, you have about 1,000 teaspoons of blood in your body and about one teaspoon of sugar. So when you jack up too much sugar, it's going to cause your brain to work overdrive. And believe it or not, when sugar burns in the brain on a cellular level, it creates a lot of smoke, okay. free radical damage. So we're actually shifting computer programmers over to a ketogenic diet where they're more focused and more dialed in. And we have specific programs to increase their performance by just shifting their brain from burning carbs to burning fat, it's, it's truly phenomenal. And less sugar, less carbohydrates, more fat. More fat. Oh, All right. Oh, fat. my God. Oh God. <laughs> more fat. What's that going to do? All right. So tell us about these mirror neurons, because those are kind of a hot topic out there. And what have you learned about them? Yeah, this is, this is really interesting. From a, uh, again, neurology is moving so fast. Medicine is moving so fast. They're making discoveries really quick. Um, and it's changing the landscape in neurology. I mean, I sit down with the neurologist and talk to them. Mirror neurons was just discovered a short time ago. And what we found out was... Um, if you're looking at a golfer, okay, and you're, and you're watching him make a putt on TV, it lights up certain parts of your brain. Now, if you putt, try to putt 
you know, a golf ball into a hole on, on, the, on the green. It'll light up certain parts of your brain. We can see it in MRI. And what mirror neurons do is whether we're watching it on TV or we're doing it ourselves, the same neurons are lighting up. So now if somebody's paralyzed or they're not, or, or, or they've got depression or, or they've got an illness, we know that the virtual reality can actually stimulate certain neurotransmitters that'll help with neurogenesis to light up those pathways. We never knew that before. I mean, the, the neurologists that I spoke to think that the mirror neurons is comparable to landing on the moon. That's how interesting this is and where it's gonna take neurology in the next few years because we, we never knew by watching something we could actually start to heal our brain. Um, so what we're talking about here is virtual reality can cause healing when it's done the right way and then being in front of a computer for over 10 to 15 hours can cause damage. We've got to find that balance. And most people aren't looking at virtual reality as healing. They're looking at it as a fun gaming or performance or other kind of stuff, but the healing aspect is super important. Well, we know that people that use virtual reality are able to, their reaction time quicken, so they're using it for sports um, performance. Okay. I, I like to take it to the next level because one of my, uh, one of my best friends and, and a client is a songwriter. He's lead singer in a band. Him and I are always brainstorming on content. My feeling is with brain injury patients, that if we use virtual reality and, and play the songs that they're used to hearing in that era and, and showing them virtual reality uh, 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 healing properties of, of, of what they've been, whatever sport they've been doing, if they're sitting in there in bed, they hear the music that they're used to, and then they're, they've got the virtual reality headset on that's lighting up certain neurotransmitters in the brain, I think both these can be used as a healing process moving forward. And I know that, that sounds crazy, but I mean, that, that's how we think. <laughs> but neurologists can also see this. They see this going on in the brain. When they do the brain scan, they can see the stuff. MRIs, fMRIs. Yeah, they actually see this in real time right now, exactly. So let's get back to the performance side of things, because obviously a lot of people are sitting in front of computers. Right. A lot of doing work, and the companies have a lot of people that are doing it too. So when these people kind of go south, uh, their companies aren't as productive as they should be. And so a lot of companies rely on these people to be healthy. So Great. what yeah. kind of stuff have you seen and what you can do uh, to kind of improve the performance of some of these folks. When I do a discovery on somebody before they see the docs, you know, I got to get a backstory on them, see what they're, you know, I'm dropped into the second act of a third act play, right? So, and a lot of folks obviously don't tell you the truth of what they're doing, so you got to drill down on that. But these people that are the high-level code writers, uh, they, they have a word, what is it, carpe noctum? Did I say it right? Yeah. yeah, seize the night. Seize the night, yeah. These guys write code at night for a reason. They're highly creative and they're artists. And it's when it's quiet around uh, Yeah, it's, 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 it's very quiet. So, uh, you know, when they go south, uh, physiologically, you know, they start to run into depression. Um, they can't focus. And this is their life, and it may be, these guys may be the, the number one people that is making this venture capital startup company. You know, they may be developing the next billion dollar app so they can't fall by the wayside. So the code writers that I've worked with, when they start to run into symptoms, the first thing they do is, oh, I gotta go to my doctor. Well, the doctor doesn't know how to treat them. I mean, he's, he's gonna make recommendations. The blood work's gonna come back normal. But this is a brain chemistry issue from the computer, right? So that now they don't know where to go and they end up getting put on sleeping pills and, and medication that starts to damage them on a cellular level and makes their brain, brain chemistry worse. So, and you've actually helped folks. So tell us about Andrew Nash because you've actually helped him turn himself around. I looked at what he was doing. He's a high level code writer, uh, very analytical. Uh, I sat down with him for hours and got the backstory and saw where medicine was, was taking him. And uh, I mean, this is a good guy. This is a sharp guy, but I mean, he's not trained. And he was getting taken down the wrong road. So I, we actually did multiple tests on him to look at multiple metabolic markers of the body, how to improve his brain chemistry. He ended up losing weight. I mean, sitting there in the computer chair, Not even he, he was losing weight because we, we ramped his metabolism up. We ramped up his focus. So he's a, I think that, you know, because of what we did with Andrew, and he's such a student of this, I, I, I believe that down the road he could be a consultant for other programmers. He's that sharp. Russ's program helped me a lot because First off, it put me more in charge of my own health. Uh, I, I wasn't just following somebody's instructions and everything. He was more of a partner in helping me find the deficiencies that for my specific situation. So, you know, the, the diet, everyone can go on a diet. You know, the testosterone, everyone can take testosterone. But finding the way to into the context of an individual is really the strength that Russ brings to this particular program. And I talked to him too, and he, it comes to that point where they just go down, 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 and they try and get help, they try and get help, doesn't work, and they finally hit that bottom, and they're like, I need some. And so at that point, they're willing to work 
and do what they can on their part. First of all, he's, he's very skeptical. He's already been to four doctors. He's not getting answers. He can't sleep at night. He has anxiety. He's in a relationship. He's running his company. So when I sit down with him, I've got to clean the chalkboard in his head. And he's looking at me like, you know, I'm batshit crazy. How am I going to help him, right? So anyway, by having that dialogue, and letting him know my backstory, what I've been through with war veterans, what I've been through with professional athletes, the doctors that I've trained. I mean, just Google my name so we could cut to the chase. Once I get his confidence in me, then we can start drilling down on his protocol. Then I slide him over to one of my docs who's highly trained that could get him back on, back on track. And, and what we're doing is we're gleaning research from these high-level code writers so we could distribute this through a distribution channel with one of my other buddies has a company with 2,000 employees and he needs to keep them productive. It's in the insurance business. That's the next thing I want to talk about. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so you've helped the individual, okay? So what can you do from step back for a company that has a lot of people? What can you do to kind of implement and help them out? Well, that's good because, you know, what we learn from the computer programs and what we learn from individuals, listen, everybody's biochemically unique. Every program or high-level program out there is biochemically unique. But what we can do is design a program for a company that has two, 3,000 people in front of a computer what can they do, what can they learn, what can they eat, what can they watch out for? So there's some sweeping generalizations okay. in this customized medicine that we could design for large companies to help their employees be productive. Teach them about the brain. Starts with education. Yeah, teach them about the brain. Teach them about why they need to take breaks. Teach them about why their body only works in intervals. Teach them why sitting is the new smoking. Why is it important to exercise and if you come back and sit in front of a computer, you're going to be more productive. So the companies that I work with, uh, that have two, 3,000 people in front of the employees. They care about their employees. We're going to plug this training in that you're going to help me shoot. <laughs> I'm just saying. So uh, any, anyway, it's going to be the first time it's ever been done in companies. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that. They need to be looking at that because it's, we're not getting away from computers or no, technology. No, so. no, no. It's, uh, listen, whether it's your cell phone, whether you're looking at your cell phone, you're looking at a computer, you're answering an email, it causes a little dopamine spurt. Dopamine's our feel-good chemical. So, yeah, yeah, the bing. Yeah, the, yeah the ping. So it's, it, it is addictive because we know that computers rewire the brain. We know that from the addiction research in China that they opened up their internet addiction center that when they do an fMRI and look at somebody on a cellular level that they feel is addicted, their socialization aspect of their brain is atrophied and then their, their, their clinical or their, or, or their functioning aspect of their prefrontal cortex is not atrophied, it's actually growing. So from being on the games. It causes a withdrawal from society. Exactly, right? so it's a, you know, they're, they're learning now that it's, it's actually affecting certain parts of the brain and it can be measured. Oh, wow. and, and again, we, we never saw that before. So, you know, your children being in front of a computer, listen, it's, it's just like marathon running. You know, you can't keep running marathons because you're going to damage your body. Everybody thinks it's healthy. I was one of those guys thinking, okay, I'm, the longer I go, my faster race times is going to be healthy. It's not. Being in front of a computer too long is not healthy. A little bit of virtual reality, looking at the mirror neurons with the right about of nutrition can be healing. You stay in front of the computer too long, you're going to hurt yourself, mm -hmm. you know? Careful, we're going to turn into the movie WALL-E, running around on a little flotation device. Yeah, yeah that was good. Yeah, that's a good example. That's a good example. Right. That's a quick little highlight, brain chemistry, brain function with the internet, and kind of what Russ Scala can do and his uh, protocols that he can do. If you have any questions, contact the Institute, Scala Precision Health, right? Getting mm -hmm. help and running. Thanks. Thanks, Russ. homie. See you later.